Hey, so today we're going to talk about a uh, taper jig that I made in Mosaic, fully parametric, and uh, cuts all the parts you need, less the uh, less some T-bolts and some uh, T-nuts. So this is kind of what I copycatted this thing here, less the, uh, the miter slots. You can do this pretty easily, but um, I just wanted to do the cheapest, most CNC happy kind of way to do it. And this was the way. It cuts some clamps too as well. Just uh, something simple and I just wanted to show you how you can make something parametric that's not a cabinet. It has nothing to do, not really a cabinet at all. So I'll just go out of there. So in Mosaic I had our, I've already made it and <clears throat> I'm just going to show you how you get to this, a point like this. So what happened was I took a door. So I just took a, a straight up cabinet door changed the name of it, uh, or back panel, I think actually, changed the back panel, and then I just started adding and changing parts and adding parametric stuff to it. Um, I added a bunch of custom parameters. You can add any parameter you want down here if you add, like, uh, you can say, I don't know, slot width. And if you're doing a calculation, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're doing a calculation and you reference slot width, so you go like, width times whatever minus the slot width. You can write that actual thing in in the uh, formulas and it'll reference that. So then if you update it here, it'll uh, parametrically update your, your drawing. So it's really helpful when you're trying to sort of like work together an object um, similar to the way SolidWorks works. I don't know if anybody's ever used SolidWorks, but you can reference in the same way. You just you write in your formula what uh, what you've written here. You can also reference any of the other standard par parameters. These ones are not relevant to anything other than this taper jig, so that's why you write it in here. Uh, and then you just edit it. You can edit it here. And then so now I I started working on all those. We'll start with the bottom. This was the first part that I had going, and edit operations. I, I put a dado in the bottom. Uh, this dado is, let's just click the width. It's the track width. So as you can see right here, track width three quarters. So if I change that, it's going to parametrically update the width of my track. Pretty much all miter bars are three quarters, so I'll probably never change that, but I just wanted to be able to change it if I needed to adjust it by millimeter here or there. Then you go to part. <clears throat> it gets a bit complicated when you're trying to do like depths, so like the depth of this uh, drawer side thickness. So I, I made the miter bar up in this program too, and I set the material as a drawer thick drawer side so that's why i said drawer side thickness minus the depth because i want to know how much it sticks out of the bottom uh length part length so it just stays the same length as the part uh yeah that's pretty much it for that these ones here are actually cancel out of there we'll go perspective filled and then if you go here and you hit high detail, this is where you can get like a nice full detailed version of what you're cutting. I haven't quite set the part positions exactly. So it may look a bit weird, but it cuts perfectly. Um, on the bottom, I have my dado for the for this. Uh, and then the T slot, I just did a, a two pass dado. So it's gonna do, uh, how can I show this better? So in this part, as you can see, it's just a, a dado, a full dado, full depth dado, and then a little shorter dado so that the T-slot rides in that track right there. So it's basically just two dados. And then in the back of the miter bar, I just put a rabbit in it so that it's uh, that T-slot, the T-bolts just slide right underneath uh, we got I added some knobs they're just simple ovals with a little 20 millimeter hole and a 5 millimeter hole so that you can use uh, T nuts those little threaded inserts and you just whack that in and you got yourself a knob 
Uh, clamps are pretty straightforward. I just uh, did a piece with that rabbits out this part and then leaves you a little tab, tab here and then you just thread your your T-nut through it and put a little tighten your nut down and then your piece is clamped in there. Uh, miter bar, same idea. I had to make the dados on the on these sides extra wide because I'm using a 3 8 cutter to do this little rabbit here, which is just a teeny tiny rabbit. As you can see, just a little rabbit. Nice because you don't really need an outfeed table, it just kind of grabs into the miter slot. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I'll show you this here too. Oh, that's showing me the whole thing. I'll show you the guide. So this part here again has a double double depth uh, bolt slot there so that one I can use this to thread through and tighten down and it kind of goes back and forth so you can set your taper and then uh, I can also use it to clamp the piece down on this side. So. Just a quick way how to uh, set up a taper jig and you can download this. You have to set up your material templates or whatever. Uh, like I said, I had it set as, uh, I had them set as drawer sides. So, and I have this stuff called from Mica Compact, which is this uh, super hard phenolic plastic, which we used to cut the drawer sides and the clamps out of. And then the rest will cut out of Baltic birch. We've cut a few of these now. They work really, really nice. So I just wanted to add that into our, uh, as, our, as a video so you can get an idea of different things you can cut that aren't exactly cabinets. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.